Van Gogh was born on March 30th, 1853, in the village of Zender in the Brabant region of the Netherlands. His first job was a clerk in an art firm. Later, he worked as a bookseller, teacher, and preacher before deciding to become an artist at the age of 27. Van Gogh evolved into one of the most famous artists in Western art history, and many of his drawings and paintings and letters are displayed at the Van Gogh Museum. The museum possesses one of the largest collections of Vincent van Gogh's paintings in the world. Among the beautiful paintings on display, there are famous works like the pink peach tree here, sunflowers, almond blossom, and the potato eaters. In 1973, the Van Gogh Museum was opened consisting of two buildings. Garrett Rietveld, a member of Progressive Art Movement, and D. Stigel. Van Gogh was obsessed with the nature and his relationship with the environment, and it influenced his art and his life. The Dutch artist hated the city, seeking inspiration and comfort in the countryside. Those landscapes and nature inspired paintings. He tried to capture the beauty of nature and capture the essence of his air. In the, his letters and drawings, we were able to see his moods and overall style, which made him a forerunner of the expressionist movement. The letters between Van Gogh and his brother Theo are a rich source of insight into his mind and the important importance of nature in his works. I chose this art piece because it was, has a wonderful story behind it. The painting meant a lot to Van Gogh and that is why I feel this artwork is so important. During his stay in France, Vincent Van Gogh was often inspired by the beautiful fruit trees he saw growing in his neighborhood. This was a source of comfort and hope for him during his time of depression. He was also struck by the idea that even the most decayed trees could produce beautiful flowers. His inspiration for his work came from his time in Paris, where he was immersed in the last trends, our latest trends in art. In 1888, he moved to find a better environment for his work. Due to his poor health and his relationship with his brother, Theo, he decided to move away. Vincent's baby nephew received the paintings as a present. Theo and his wife, Jo, named their son Vincent after his uncle when he was born on January 31st, 1890. It does me too better and gives me more pleasure than I could convey in words, Van Gogh said of the news. He immediately got to work on it this painting. He painted the blue sky around the branches with great precision. You can notice how many distinct hues of blue he used, which like in a real life sky, if you look attentively. During his initial weeks in Arles, Van Gogh painted many fruit orchards. Van Gogh completed an earlier, nearly identical version of this painting in a single session. I painted a number 20 canvas in an orchard in the open air a plowed lavender field, a reed fence, and two pink peach trees against a gorgeous blue and white sky. He wrote, this is probably the nicest landscape I've ever done. When he arrived home, he discovered Anton Moif, 1838 to 1888, his uncle by marriage, had passed away. Van Gogh had previously studied with Moif, a well-known painter. He dedicated the piece to Moif and then created this updated version to deliver to Theo. Flowering Orchards is a sequence of paintings created by Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh in the spring of 1888 in Arles, southern France. In February 1888, van Gogh arrived amid Arles in a snowstorm. Within two weeks, the weather had changed and the fruit trees were in bloom. The painting was completed in the spring. Fascinated by the colors and lighter province, the artist created a series of canvases depicting blossom trees. In the bottom left corner, there is a dedication souvenir de Moivre, which refers to Vince's artist cousin, Antoine Moivre, whom he studied under in the Hague. The flower blossoms on the tree caught my attention because they were a vibrant pink and the art overall was beautiful. The Dutch capital city of Amsterdam is a fascinating city set along an intricate canal system. It is lined with quaint narrow gable tops houses from the golden age of the 17th century the city has a rich history while also having a well-preserved artistic aesthetic